In this module, we will consider the scalar product of two vectors. We know what it means to multiply a vector by a scalar, but what does it mean to multiply two vectors? It turns out that there is more than one way to do this. Here, we will explore one very useful way of multiplying two vectors together that yields not another vector, but a scalar. This operation is referred to as a scalar product or dot product of two vectors. And it is defined by, well, given two vectors, multiply the magnitude of one vector by how much of the other vector points in the same direction. For example, consider two vectors a and b. Their dot product is written as a dot b. Now, if we consider the a vector and how much of it points in the direction of b, well, if theta is the angle between the two vectors, then the component of a in the direction of b is simply the magnitude of a times the cosine of theta. So the dot product will then be given by the magnitude of a times the cosine of theta times the magnitude of b. On the other hand, if we consider how much of the vector b points in the direction of a, again, using the same angle theta, that component of b is the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle theta. And so the dot product is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of theta. So in either case, whether we consider projecting part of a in the direction of b or projecting b in the direction of a, we get the same result, that the dot product between a and b is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. Now consider two vectors a and b where the angle between them is larger than 90 degrees. Well, let's consider how much of A points in the direction of B. We'll use the angle phi here, which is obtained between the angle A and the extension of B in the direction of A. The component of A along that direction is A cosine phi, but it's pointed in the opposite direction of B. And so we say that A dot B is going to be equal to minus the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of that small angle phi. But using a little bit of trigonometry, we can rewrite this in terms of the angle theta between the two vectors. And we see that we get simply the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta. And since theta is larger than 90 degrees, the cosine of that value will be negative and we will get a negative result as we would expect since A and B do not point along the same direction. Now here are a few simple examples to keep in mind. If we take the dot product of any vector with itself, we're simply going to get the magnitude squared of that vector. If we take the dot product of a vector with minus itself, we're going to get minus the magnitude squared of that vector. If we consider the dot product between unit vectors, i hat, j hat, and k hat, well, unit vectors are vectors that have unit length. Their magnitude is 1. So the dot product of any unit vector with itself is simply 1. Whereas the dot product of any unit vector with another different unit vector is going to be zero because the unit vectors are all perpendicular to each other. Now also consider some additional important mathematical properties. Consider three vectors, a, b, and c, and two scalars, alpha and beta. The scalar product is commutative, first of all. a dot b is equal to b dot a. The scalar product acts only on vectors. So if I have a product of a scalar and a vector, beta times b, and I dot that with a, then it's the same thing as the scalar beta multiplying the scalar, which is the dot product of a dot b. And the scalar product is said to be linear. That is, it satisfies the following properties. If I have alpha times a plus beta times b, and I take the sum of those and dot it with another vector c, it's the same thing as alpha times a dot c plus beta times b dot c. Finally, we can consider another useful way of expressing the dot product or the scalar product, and that is in terms of component notation. If I have two vectors, a and b, expressed in terms of their components, then, of course, a dot b can be written out explicitly by expanding each vector in terms of its components and unit vectors. And then we multiply this out. We're going to get a total of nine terms here. Here we've written each line in terms of the piece of A multiplying all of B, but there's in total nine terms here. 
Notice that all the terms where one of the unit vectors is multiplying a different unit vector all vanish because that dot product is zero. The dot product of a unit vector with itself is one. And so what we find is that the scalar product of A and B is simply going to be given by the product of the X components of A and B plus the products of the Y components of A and B plus the products of the Z components of A and B.